way this works, I'll just I do the first first. I think it's the second. I'll just go back and do the first first. <laughs> Do the first, the second, and do the first again. That's the. Okay. <clears throat> and wave your palm. Oh. And if you know this song, please <laughs> sing it out. Oh, 
verses 37 through 40. And again, another scripture says, they shall look on him whom they pierce. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, <coughs> Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but a secret, uh, secret one for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate for he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate granted permission. So he came and took away his body. Nicodemus, who had, had first come to him by night, also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pounds in weight. So they took the body of Jesus and bound it in the linen wrappings with the spices and as is the burial custom of the Jews. Amen. 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 I think I wrote the wrong verse down. I think so. It was good. You want me to have it? No. I decided not to. I just go with the flow of everything else that's happened so far. <laughs> This is in the brown book. Oh, in the brown book. In the brown book. In the brown book. Oh. Brown book. Oh.
lost our uh, good friend this week. He died, Mike Moore. Oh. I've had him on the list here for a couple oh. of weeks. I've had more, longer than that, he's been on our list. Oh. But uh, um, well, I think it was Tuesday morning. They must have went into his room at the at the nursing home, and he had died. Oh. He had died in his sleep. So uh, very sad to have to give him up. So pray for Mike's family. Take me off there, Linda and Sharon, a copy of okay. her own way. Then does Sharon remove? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we're glad you were able to be removed. I want you to keep my Tina in your prayers. Um, I think it was all day yesterday. Uh, she didn't have any bowel movements at all. And, and and that that just makes you think another blockage, which is what it was. But last night last night at nine thirty it broke loose. Hey. So she's got an appointment tomorrow in um, Indianapolis uh, with the doctor that will do the surgery on the hernia that I told you about last week. But uh, he is he acts like he's got so many surgeries he couldn't do it for June or July. And Tina just cannot wait that long, so she's just going to meet him for the first time tomorrow. And she said, I'm, "We're going to have a serious talk. She's just going to tell that doctor just how bad she needs him, you know." So keep Tina in your prayers, cause she she's working too. She was at work, you know, and she just can hardly eat anything. Or so just 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 pray for Tina. You know, there's a lot of people being sick this week because mm -hmm. we heard from one of our friends that uh, couldn't go to uh, to Mike's funeral because he was sick, and then another couple they couldn't go because uh, uh, she was sick. So I do know there's there's sickness out there. There is sickness out there. Joe is going to have a, a angioplasty. Oh, I wasn't going to say that. <laughs> You don't want prayer? Do you, do you think it would go away on its own or what? <laughs> <laughs> the doctor changed his mind, but he's not going to. <laughs> so where they just go in to check your heart out? Uh, going in April 3rd for uh, angioplasty on the carotid arteries. Okay. And I'm having a stent put in the uh, arterial vein to the kidneys. Oh, okay. Oh. Okay. And that's on April the 3rd. Hopefully everybody will work out good. Good. Maybe you'll be, maybe you'll be good as new. Yeah. yeah. That's in, at Michigan City, right? Michigan City, yeah. Uh, Franciscan. Okay. Okay. And over there we got Linda Suckey. Get that fixed there. Huh? Your Suckey's over here. That one's fixed there, right? Yes, yes, uh -huh. my septic. You can take her off the second one. Well, yeah, one, one, two, three, four, well Linda, one Linda, Linda did get her, uh, well, the leak or whatever was so bad under her uh, home. Uh, she was telling us all about it last week. She got that taken care of. She followed, called somebody out of the phone book and they came to her and helped her. So. Who was that? Francis. Oh, I wasn't here. Who was it? Linda. Oh, Linda, she had a, a, a water under her home and uh, she couldn't hardly find nobody that would want to come and help her. Mm. And finally she called this one number and they came to her. What town was they from? Francisville. Francisville. Well, Collins pumped it first and and they didn't get it all, so I still had the problem. Oh. From the other place, from Kelsey, from uh, septic, from um, Francisville came out. Kelsey. So I had to pay another $300. It's two times she's had to pay 300 that's kind of scary because we're going to have to have our second pump. <laughs> Last time we had it, it was 175. So it shows you how they're going up, don't it? Mm -hmm. Everything. Not just that, everything. Okay. Well, we're so thankful, Linda, that you got it, that you got it fixed. You don't have to dump this water out. Wash my face in hot water. Bob Howard? Bob Powers. Yeah, Bob Howard. Oh, Ron, you're saying Ron. No, Ron. Oh, Bob? Ron. Bob Powers? Yeah. Brother to Ron. They're 
There's two brothers. Yeah, I know it. Power. Do you know anything about it? Uh, was he? Well. Thank you for telling us, Sarah. She like I always do Ron better, a little better than him. So. Is there any others? Oh, powers. This coming Friday? Or already had it? Already had it. Who? Is that from that accident? No, this is a Okay, he had surgery. Who was it, huh? Maddie Baker. It's my son's girlfriend. She's 14 and she's been having seizures. They sent her to Rite Aid. Mm -hmm. They don't know what's happening. Age 14. And did you say her name was Maddie? Maddie. Okay. What was her last name? Baker. Baker? Seizures. That's very scary. Anybody else? Anybody else? Let's take these to the Lord in prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for the sunshine. We thank you, Lord, for each one that's made it a point to be in your house today, Lord, to worship you and the fellowship with one another. Thank you, Lord. And we pray for, uh, for Kelly Caudell. Many names on here today. And you know the reasons, Lord, why their names are on here. Whatever, whatever it is, Lord, just be with that person. Thank you, Lord. And, uh, and Bruce Caston, different things seems to be going wrong, Lord hands are swelling and he's lived through COVID a couple of times so we just pray for wisdom for the doctors that are surrounding him that they can know what to do to help him Lord just be with Bruce this week and we pray for the family of Mike Moore Lord we lost a dear dear friend this week be with his family in the days ahead we know Mike's going to be missed Thank you, Lord. And we pray for my Tina, Lord. We pray for just each day that could come her way, Lord. I know she wants to have surgery, and she also wants to keep working for a while. So, Lord, we just put Tina in your hands, and we ask for <clears throat> wisdom for the doctor tomorrow when she talks to him. Thank you, Lord. And we pray for Joe, for all the different procedures he's going to have. We just put Joe in your hands, Lord. We pray everything just goes just as it's supposed to go, Lord. And that Joe will feel so much better. Thank you, Lord. And we pray for Bob Powers. Died a kidney. He had kidney disease. And we just really don't know, Lord, everything that was wrong. But be with the Powers family, Lord. Touch them right where they're at now. And I know that Bob's going to be missed. Thank you, Lord. And we pray for Bruce for the surgery that he had this week. We pray for healing. And we pray that this surgery solves a, a problem that he's been living with. Watch over Bruce, Lord. And we pray for uh, Maddie Baker, Lord. Young girl, 14, having seizures. Seizures, Lord. Sounds so very, very scary. So, Lord, just give wisdom to the doctors and nurses that are surrounding her and that they can find out why is this happening, Lord, to this young girl. Lord, we just put Maddie in your hands. Thank you, Lord. Now be with our pastor, Lord, as he brings a message. Let each one of us this day, Lord, listen and understand and apply it to our lives. In that precious name we pray. Amen. Amen.
another new song. So. <laughs> yeah. See, this is a, a Chris Tomlin song from a few years back. trial of Jesus, touching on, you know, Peter had remorse over denying Christ, but he had repentance. He repented of what he had done, and was later he was reinstated because of his repentance. Judas also had remorse, but 
no repentance. And that became his end. So we see that Jesus replaced Barabbas. So in the same way that Jesus took his place, going in for the punishment, Jesus is actually doing that for all of us. He took on all the wrath, all the punishment that we deserve on ourselves. And we read that and we hear about that a lot, that Jesus took our punishment. Jesus took the wrath of God. And that's really kind of, for me, it was hard to, you know, it's hard to comprehend how much he went through. And just the, how much pain we, you know, we have pain in our own lives. We have all these things that we go through. But what he went through for us, taking on the wrath of God, was how to, if, to comprehend the wrath of God. I just I can't. Because most people would basically, if you ask most people, they would basically say, I'm an okay person. I'm pretty decent. I have a few mess ups here and there, but I'm I'm basically good. I'm okay. But Romans says that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And First Thessalonians says, We are to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath to come. That was all of us that should have had the wrath of God on us. And back to Romans again says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and all the unrighteousness of men. So any type of sin, anything, we we're born into that curse. So we have that on us, and we would deserve the wrath that God would have for us because of that sin. So to get really a grip on that, to really, I just, I, even reading it over and over, I can't get a grip of what God's wrath would actually be. You see the descriptions of what is to come, and outer darkness, and a gnashing and thief, and all that, and it's still just too much. And that's one of the reasons why we can celebrate now. We're coming in, this is Palm Sunday, where Jesus came in, and we're celebrating Easter that's coming up, the resurrection. That's our encouragement that Jesus died and rose again. And yes, that what we go through in our lives, there's a lot of trials, there's a lot of pain, there's suffering, but ultimately we have salvation through Christ Jesus. We have peace, we have joy and forgiveness. So now as we move into the crucifixion, we've come out of the trial and into the crucifixion, and I'm using Matthew 27, John 19 is where I screwed up the verse for Job, and Luke 19. I was a lot in John 19, so I think I just, anyway, I got one for next week already. <laughs> so, we know that Jesus has already been beaten, he's been spit on, he's been mocked, that's where they put the blindfold over him and they're punching him and hitting him, and now we're taking up, moving beyond that. And it says in John 19, Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. The soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They clothed him in a purple robe and went up to him again, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they struck him in the face. And this is the point, going through the flogging, the scourging, most people died. They didn't even get to crucifixion. Without getting into too much detail, this is where, where they're ripping them apart. You know, you have exposed bones. I said that some people would have organs that would be visible because of this, because of this beating. And at that point, you're supposed to carry your cross to where you're going to be crucified. So whether you see the pictures where he's carrying the entire cross, or if he's just carrying the cross beam, it's still, it's heavy. And he had no energy. Anybody getting just beat up, you're not going to be wanting to carry this huge board. So that comes to Luke 23. It says, as they led him away, they seized Simon from Cyrene, who was on the way in from the country. And they put the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. And a large number of people followed him, including women who mourned and wailed for him. So this Simon of Cyrene, he was there for Passover, coming up into the well, Pentecost, coming into that feast. And he's just there for, for the festival, for the feast. And they yank him out of the crowd, and the next thing you know, he's dragging a cross. 
Now he's being led now to Golgotha, the skull, which is <clears throat> just above Mount Moriah. So we have down here where Abraham on the hill, the base of the hill coming up, down here Abraham was to offer Isaac here. You go farther up the hill, here's Golgotha. So we have the exact same places where fathers were to sacrifice their sons. Now when the Romans crucified someone, they did it where everybody could see it. In this road to Golgotha, there was a road that went in front of it, so it was very easy to see what was going on. And they put this out there so it would be, you don't mess with the Roman government. They're gonna put it out there. They want everybody to see what's going to happen to you if you try to rise up against the Roman government. So we hear the song, The Old Rugged Cross, or we see the paintings of like way off in a field somewhere, there's this little rolling hill and there's crosses way out here in the distance. No, they put it right there so you could see it. They wanted you to see this, this terrible thing going on. So the crucifixion itself was invented by the Persians. Now the Persians thought the earth, the ground was sacred. So like the Romans, the only people that got crucified were the very worst of the worst people. Now with the ground being sacred, the Persians <laughs> wouldn't take the bodies down because they didn't want the bones and the bodies of these horrible people being put into the sacred earth. So they would crucify you and there you were until the birds and the dogs and the animals would scavenge you. So there was no burial for anybody that was crucified by the Persians. So we go continuing into Luke 23. It says, two other men, both criminals, were led out to be with him, to be executed. And when they came to the place called the Skull, there they were crucified. They crucified him along with the criminals, one on the right and the other on his left. Now they are called criminals here, some say thieves, but they would also be most likely, what they would call them insurrectionists, or what we would call them terrorists, murderers, somewhat basically what Barabbas was, the worst of the worst. So they're not really just your petty thieves. You wouldn't be crucified for being a thief. You'd be beaten, but not crucified. So now we have Jesus on the cross, and just taking a look at some of the statements that he has from the cross. Now we all, I don't know if you've heard different sermons and different teachings on the seven statements from the cross. I'm just going to kind of go through these in order using these three different Gospels. Now Luke 23, it says his sin, he's up on the cross. They've lifted him up. He's there. And the first words that Jesus says is, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. Calling for prayer of forgiveness, the very first thing that comes out of his mouth after everything that's gone on, all the beatings, he's bleeding, he's dying there slowly, and he says, Father, forgive them. This is while at the same time, the soldiers are dividing up his clothes and all of his belongings are being passed out around the soldiers. It says the people stood watching and even the rulers sneered at him. They said, he saved others, let him save himself. If he is Christ of God, the chosen one, so they're not, they're still insulting him. They're still mocking him. He's hanging up there. They're dividing up this stuff. And he says, Father, forgive them. Now, a few different things, the angles on this prayer that he gives. One, in that it was for all of us, which basically it was. All of us have sinned. All of us have fallen short. Forgive them, Father, for their sins. Forgive them. Everybody has sinned against the Lord, against their father. Jesus is looking down on the Jewish leaders, the Roman soldiers. Some are there to see, because later on they'll say, when he cries out, they'll say, hey, wait and see if Elijah comes. Some were there, were glad that he was up there. But this is Jesus following his own teaching, love your enemies. 
He's showing compassion towards the people that just beat him, just killed him, and just put him up there to die. And in that, we are also called to love. How can you get to that point, being put in that position? It's like, how can we have that much love of Christ? But well, we see that with Stephen in the book of Acts. When Stephen is taken in for trial, they're stoning him, and Jesus comes with basically the same statement. Forgive them. Jesus following his own teaching. He also shows this, that these are the people that have killed him. These are the people that beat him, but he prays for them. No one is beyond prayer. He's praying for those who hated him, hated what he was teaching. And that's where we need to continue to pray for people that are lost, people in our families, friends, people that are around us. Pray for them regardless. Pray for their salvation. A lot of the people that were here for the crucifixion were also there for the day of Pentecost. A little time later, where Peter gave the first sermon and 3,000 people were saved, and some of these people were here yelling at Jesus. The next thing he says is, Truly I say to you, you will be with me in paradise. So after he's prayed for, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. The thief on the cross says, Lord, remember me in your kingdom. So that works basically immediately. There was one man yelling at him, save us, get us down from here. If you're supposed to be who you say you are, save us. The other guy says, hey, I know why we're up here. We're up here because we're criminals. We're supposed to be up here. We're getting what we deserve. He recognizes his own sin before Jesus and says, will you forgive me? Will you remember me when you are in your kingdom? And Jesus sees his mother, Mary's down this goes back to the there will be a spear that will pierce your very soul <clears throat> this is this is it when Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved John standing nearby he says to his mother dear woman here is your son and to the disciple he said here is your mother from that time on John would take Mary into his home and he would take care of Mary. So we're under the assumption at this point Joseph is gone and Jesus is in effect making sure that everything is taken care of, getting his affairs in order, making sure that his mother would be taken care of beyond this time. So we go on to end up jumping back to Matthew 27. <coughs> It says, now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. So according to a Jewish clock, this would be sometime between 12 to 3 o'clock. There was darkness that came over the land. And in the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, okay, we've all heard this. And I've heard it's this, I've seen this spelt, I don't know how many different ways, and I've heard it pronounced, in, well, I'm going to go ahead. I can't be any worse than I've heard anybody else say it. Eli, Eli, lama sakabatini. Basically, it says, that is my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? This darkness comes over the land, and Jesus says, why have you forsaken me? Why have you turned from me? At this time, when he cries out like this, all of the sin of everybody is on him at once. Darkness in the middle of the day. I've heard some people say that, oh, this is the anger of Satan. He's all this coming over. This is the darkness. No, there was a plague over Egypt that was darkness. This is God bringing darkness on the land. Now, as the historians have found, and this would be not just Jewish, but um, Roman historians said that there was a letter that was found written from Pilate to Caesar, basically asking him, was it dark there too? There was darkness over the land here. What happened in Rome? So this is something that went on. We don't know how far it stretched. It just said that there was darkness over the land. And Pilate was wanting to know, hey, did you guys see this too? 
This was the time when Jesus was separated from the Father. The Father cannot have sin, cannot be a part of sin, and they were separated for that moment. That is why have you forsaken me? This goes back to the same thing. It's like when they, he says, Father in the garden is asked, can there be other way? Can you take this cup from me? But every sin of every person, including us, and those that are to come, all of that sin is on him in one moment. All of that pain. Some would say, can you question God? Are you supposed to question God? Yes, you can question God. He never turns from God. He questions him, just like Job. When Job had his issues and his problems, he didn't ever say that God doesn't exist or God, you're, do you're wrong, but God, this is what's happening to me. Why? But Jesus says, this is happening to me, Father. Why? That's in his pain and in his distress. It says, behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from the top to the bottom, and the earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs were also opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many more evidence that this was true and this was real. That people that had died recently, that were in Christ, were in following the Father, the righteous people, came back to life. The temple was opened. The Holy of Holies is now open to everybody through Christ Jesus. And when the centurion and those who were with him saw, <clears throat> keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were filled with awe and said, truly, this is the Son of God. So in John 19, it says, Later, knowing that all was com now completed, and so that the scripture would be filled, Jesus said, I thirst or I am thirsty. And this goes back to Psalm 22 and Psalm 69. And David said that I, I'm parched and that my tongue is stuck to the roof of my mouth. Now earlier they had offered Jesus um, a vinegar wine that had gall and myrrh in it. He refused that because the gall and the myrrh were painkillers. They used those for analgesics for pain at the time. So he refused that. Anything that was going to lessen his pain, he refused. At this point where he's saying, I'm thirsty, they're giving him just some wine, some vinegar wine. When he had that, was able to speak again, said when he had received the drink, he said, it is finished. Everything that he had come for, everything was completed. All the debt of sin was paid. Sin and death are now defeated because of what he said. <laughs> This had been a plan from the garden 4,000 some years up to this point, and Jesus says, it is finished. I've done it. To sacrifice full payment for our salvation and forgiveness of our sins. It says, with that, he bowed his head and gave up, the, gave up his spirit. Now, Luke will take that a little bit farther and say, Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And when he said this, he breathed his last. So it is finished, and Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Now, when they were crucified, he, the crucifixion, he died early. This should have taken another, it could go days, people would hang there. He was up there for six hours or so actually on the cross that was where they were going to break his legs they broke the other two so that they would die quicker so they could get them off the cross because they were coming into into the sabbath jesus gave up his life nobody took it from him and he became he still remained that perfect lamb without a broken bone without any issues so he gave up his spirit and he reunited with the Father, became one. Everything was finished. This is for all of us. Now we can say the same thing when we're in Christ, when we have him as our Lord and Savior. When we pass, it comes, Father, into your hand. We commit our spirits. We are to be with the Father. We are now able to go to Jesus for all the pain and the suffering for our sake for all the punishment for our sake. 
the beatings that left that opening for our healings of our minds, our bodies, our spirits. It goes back to Isaiah with, by his stripes we are healed. That was the beatings. That was the, the whipping. So we commit our spirit. All this was done that we might be brought into salvation and into the presence of Father, we thank you for this time when we start to remember exactly what you've done for us. For all the pain and suffering that Jesus went through, that sacrifice that he made so that we can say, Father, into your, into your hands. It's a place where we all want to be, Father, in your hands, in your, your possession, Father. We are now yours. We are your children because of what Jesus has done. Help us remember that, not just at Easter, but always, each and every day, that we are yours that you love us and this is your showing of your love for us. We thank you and in his name we pray. Amen. So if we come into the next song, if anybody doesn't have that relationship or wants to know Jesus as their Savior, you can come forward if you like. Talk afterwards. Please stand for the
circle of family and friends, and we find the world of love and peace. Amen.